Hi and welcome to Detectiverse Performing SQL Queries Part 2. In first session we talked about uh, who I am and where do I work. We talked about finding top CPU consuming queries, disk and top network queries. There are four areas where we'll be looking into it. We talked about the SysDMX query status as well as a DMO will be using to find all the queries which is taxing your production system. Let's start with the demo. Here is my test server. What I have done is I have prepared a top query section here and you can see that all the queries which will be running today is available here. And you can download the set of query from my blog which is www.sqlfeatures.com. For this session what will which are the top queries are run since the SQL Server started. One thing which you would like to know is all the DMOs, the data is temporary there. So it is a state as long as the SQL Server is started. Whenever SQL Server is stopped or restarted, all the DMO data get cleared and the stats gathering starts again. So right now let's go and see which are the top CPU queries are running. So this is just a SQL bunch of statement based on the two DMVs we were talking. The dim exit query stats and dim exit SQL stats. So we are collecting the date query and then just checking. So let me run it first and let's see the output and then we can start to understand this query a bit. So when I run this statement it's telling me on this server name at this point of time when the stats was collected, these are the statements which does get into the criteria. It says that it has taken 9.6 second and the plan was used 12 times and the object ID is null. And as I told you, the object ID is null when you are running a prepared SQL statement. And in this next statement, if you look at it, there is a procedure generate load has been run, which has deleted some data and taken over five seconds, and it has been executed six times. So this is how you can see the top queries which are using SQL Server. Like in this scenario, the top query is taking nine seconds, using that insert into statement, and then get executed 12 times. Now, when we say executed, we need to understand that it get executed since the SQL Server restarted. And this helps a lot to understand that when you look into this, it doesn't give you much of an idea that how much times the SQL, the same plan used was useful. So in the later session, we'll look into is that how to get exact amount of idea that how many times a query get executed. So let's look into the key portion of this query. What we are doing is I'm setting a server time to get date and then I'm selecting top 300 queries here. We're collecting SQL Server name, DB name, it's coming from ST.DBID. As you know, ST is uh, this table, which, uh, which we looked into the PowerPoint slide. It returns the DBID. And then we are trying to collect the query executed. And we are using the statement and date is in statement start offset and the text to figure it out what is the exact query getting executed. So this is a standard code you can just copy paste as it is. Uh, and this does work in almost SQL 2005, 2008 and all the versions as it is to get the exact query which is running. Once you get the SQL handle, you pass the SQL handle to SQL text and it gives you all the data back. Now, <clears throat> next we are looking to total worker time slash execution count. So we are looking at the, a, a particular SQL handle, how much total worker time has been executed on that. It is a sum of all the executions. So we are dividing it by executed count to get the average execution time. 
plus we are also dividing it by thousand to data is stored into microseconds so we are converting into the milliseconds to get some fair idea and understanding of how much every CPU time has been taken by a particular query. Last is execution count and we are calling it as the same plan used. Now it is very important to understand that this DMO is storing all the execution plans. It's collecting all the data based on execution plans. So if you are running a particular query, it gets in a particular execution plan and every time SQL Server uses that execution plan, it will put it as a count plus one. And this will be very helpful to see that how many times a particular query is getting executed and how much time it is taking per execution or an average execution. And then we are reporting the object ID. As you can see, if object ID is available, we are, if DB, DB ID is null, then we are just trying to get the object ID. If it is not available, then we are provide, DB ID is provided. In that case, we are providing the DB ID to get the object ID. So this particular code, what I'm doing is, in this query, what I'm doing is I'm selecting all the queries in this DMO which has taken more than one millisecond and has at least two execution count and the last execution time is in last two hours and the reason I'm doing is that I want to filter out all the queries which are taking some time which is noticeable any query which takes less than a millisecond we probably doesn't want to consider that and that actually not costing the system as much as possibly others and we are trying to find the top query so when you run this particular statement and if you see that more than 300 records are coming in that case what you might want to do is to increase this threshold you can come and say that uh, one millisecond is normal in my system as I'm getting too many queries and first you would like to improve the queries which are taking most of the time so you can come and put it to like 5 millisecond 10 milliseconds the idea is that you should get a result set of around 20 to 30 or maybe 50 rows anything more than that you're getting then you're not concentrating on the right queries so and at the same time once you get some good number then you want to change the execution count since we are doing in last two hours initially you might want to check is that in last two hours how many queries which has taken more than one millisecond and got executed uh, say in this example like we are doing a demo so i put it at two but in a real system you want to see something like are there any queries which are executing in last two hours for more than say 200 times or 500 times and that will give you the right amount of queries which you want to tune it. Next is what we are doing is once we get this data is there and we collected all the related data about is database object ID query all the counts and everything then we are putting a filter on top of that where I'm saying that this is the same query which criteria which I'm putting here what I'm saying is if average CPU is more than 60 milliseconds, then report it to me. I, in this example, since we'll not we'll be using the queries which are taking more than 60 seconds, so I put this criteria so we're not spending time on the queries which are using less amount of CPU. And then we are sorting it by average CPU time. So let's execute and let's try to get back again to this query. So in this system, as you can see that there are around five queries has been trapped, which are like more than using 60 milliseconds. And some of the queries are taking more than nine milli. Some queries are taking more than four seconds, which are pretty high in any system. And a query is taking like 10 seconds, but that in last two hours it got executed one or twice. 
it might be some of the big batch processes and that doesn't come into its first round for the tuning. So what you want to do is you want to increase this value to see that I do not want to see anything which is like going, which has only three times got executed in the last two hours. So you can increase it so that way you get the qualitative amount of queries which needs the fine tuning. Now, since this is the old data, what I want to do is I want to restart SQL Server so that this DMO get cleaned. So I'm restarting SQL Server. All right, so SQL Server is restarted. Let's run this query again and see if we do see anything. So as you can see, right now there is the DMO is cleared so there are no queries here now let's look at some of the preparation code we need to have we have two objects collect top cpu queries and top cpu queries and then we have a stored procedure proc generate load this is stored procedure we are using to generate some kind of a load what i'm doing is i have a table test table set three which has a lot of rows and this procedure will select top some x number of rows from this table and then will delete some of the data from test table set 4. So there is test table set 3 and test table set 4. What we'll do is we'll execute this procedure three times as we put the criteria of execution count more than two. So we want to run this procedure three times and we'll see if that particular procedure get traced into the DMO or not. Right, so let's look at the batch file which I've created to generate this particular load. And other than executing the stored procedure, there is another, I have running an ad hoc statement, insert into test db dot test table set four. And I'm inserting top x rows from test table set three. So we'll do insert the rows, we'll run this, procedure this procedure will do a select from test table set 4 and then it will delete the data from 4 and the same steps we are doing it again our idea is we are running three times ad hoc statement and three times stored procedure with different set of statements and now what we are doing again we are running three times these ad hoc statement and whatever the data we are inserting into test table set for, we are deleting it right away. So as you know, delete statement is getting executed three times within the stored procedure, and it's getting executed three times without the stored procedure as an ad hoc statement. So let's run this batch file and see how the query is visible in SQL Server. So I'll be back once the queries are completed. All right, so batch file is completed. Now we'll go ahead and see how if there are any queries are captured here. So as we can see, there are two prepaid SQL statements and two non-prepaid statements which are coming from the object in proc generate loads we call twice. And first statement was select and second was to delete. Select is taking around three and a half seconds while delete is taking over five seconds. While we run this insert into statement six times, so it is exactly captured by SQL Server as six time. And this prepared delete statement, which we run three times, did get captured and it has a time of over four seconds. So whatever the query has been executed, SQL Server has captured it. See all those, the exact CPU time taken by those queries. While if I reduce the time here to 60 to say one second, you can see a lot of, there are some other queries popped up. 
into the query and this is the main reason we don't want to worry about the queries where average CPU time is 4 or 5 milliseconds and that's the reason I changed it to 60 so that we are looking into the theta which really needs some kind of a tuning and this procedure which is deleting the table that way and if it's getting executed three times in a day it might be okay but if it is getting executed three thousand times and every time it's taking five seconds then this is certainly a query you want to tune fine tune on you want to talk to your development team or to optimize it all right so that where we check the top queries and we'll get back to this top queries to see the difference in a particular 30 minute how many queries are getting executed so we just finished part two of the series fine-tuning production db servers and finding worst performing queries uh, here are the download queries you can download these queries and whatever we saw in this session would be available in these square SQL scripts which you can run and test your environment and with that I'll see you in the next session where we'll talk about the queries to collect data from disk IO perspective as well as the network perspective also we'll look into the idea of how to see the exact queries are getting executed in a particular peak hour so you can tune them for best performance well thanks again for watching this video session uh, you can subscribe me on YouTube at SQL features visit my blog for any details and comments uh, connect me on Twitter Facebook I look forward to all your comments and questions see you in the next video